Well, good afternoon, everyone. Rod Cullerton, uh, just with a weekly update in relation to where matters are at with the Australian Electoral Commission and over the um, unfortunate, unlawful release of a warrant uh, which went out to the public and I believe did me a lot of damage, which I am dealing with. But I understand now it's a double header. And when I say a double header, uh, I've now got the Australian Financial Security Authority uh, having a crack. They've become a joinder to the action. So uh, it's basically switched from a Marlin on the line to a Orca. And uh, we need to make sure that uh, we can get the gaff out and uh, safely bring it home with us. But um, I want to just take um, people through step by step and why it's important why we must hold the so-called entities to account because simply um, we're no longer a we're no longer a body politic really and we need to come back and ascertain our rights and uh, become a social compact or construct really is is the better way to describe that and I want to take you through that because this is where where they claim that they have the authority, the head of power to act, well, in most cases, they do not. Now, I want to play your recording, and um, you're going to find it very interesting because I've yet to... Um, I'll switch this around and show you the correspondence uh, to date, and that is... Uh, let's just turn this around here now. I'll try and take it up so you can see it, but pretty well, that's where it is at the moment. Um, I understand there is a Bridget that has been doing the correspondence and this is very interesting. I did bring it up, but just to uh, inform the people, I have been charged by the Australian Federal Police with an offence contrary to Section 137 1C1 of the Criminal Code, Commonwealth, which is actually not a Commonwealth, uh, Commonwealth Act as we understand it, um, but certainly... Um, to a Commonwealth entity, entity, namely, namely the Australian Electoral Commission. Well, namely means could be, uh, may be, or whatever. But I'll take you to this, um, to this here, and let's have a look at uh, what we've been able to find out from the, um, from the. We again wrote to the Australian Government Attorney General's Department um, just to find out about. Uh, we request the instrument Australian Finance and Security Authority Act relies on for royal assent. Anyway, I'll make these documents um, available. And then we went down and uh, we, we basically set out the Bankruptcy Act. I request the instrument that provides of the Bankruptcy Act 1966 made or amended post-1973 relies on for royal assent within the meaning of the Section 58 of the Constitution and the second clause preceding the Constitution to make Commonwealth law. Well, as we go down here, uh, we simply see here, also, this is the Commissioner. He's satisfied that the documents do not exist within the Department's record holding. So we have a real issue, and this is where we um, have parted. Like I say, we do not have a uh, body politic anymore. Uh, we have no social uh, construct and this is why we must start to take action ourselves and um, and deal with it. But look, I'll, I'll um, let you know what basically has happened since uh, I'm going to play your recording because what I've been doing is um, trying to find out the prosecutor who is handling my matter and I have rung for the third time and I want to let you uh, listen to this recording because it's quite interesting. I think you'll find it quite interesting. Uh, if you ring the Commonwealth Director of Public Prosecution because I'm under an alleged offence, not only from the Australian Electoral Commission, but also from, as I understand, from the Australian Finance and Security Authority. But let me just let you have a listen to this recording. Here it goes. Uh, may I be put through to one of the prosecutors, please? Yeah, well, give me one second, sorry. So, who would you like to speak to? Uh, it's in the matter of um, 
Australian Electoral Commission and uh -huh. uh, Rodney Norman Cullerton. Are you the defence lawyer for the gentleman? Sorry? Are you the defence lawyer for Rodney Norman? No, I don't have a lawyer. Are you Rodney Norman Cullerton yourself, sorry sir? Well, I'm Rodney Norman and I'm apparently the accused, so I need to speak to a prosecutor. So usually with our policies, uh, um, so if you've got a legal representative, we request for your legal representative to touch base with the office. However, you stated that you're representing yourself. I don't Is have... correct, sir? Yes, I don't have any um, lawyer representing me at all in this matter. Yeah, fair enough. Then can I give you an email address to put out your queries onto, please? And then I'll forward it straight onto, onto the relevant place for you. Well, no, because I've been advised that I can talk to the prosecutor directly. I understand they may so be... who advised you of that? Sorry, sorry. So, okay. well, who, who are you first? So I'm the security guard, Aaron. Well, then why... <laughs> You're the security guard. Why do I need to discuss my legal matters with you? Oh, no, I, never, I didn't ask you to discuss your legal matters with me, so I said, if you can please kindly send an email just in relation to the nature. Well, look, I'll tell you what I'll do. Um, yep. I've attempted to contact the Commonwealth Director of Public Prosecution's office. I understand that they may be trying to um, give personal service of court documents. I have attempted to ring on two or more occasions and I'm being prevented from being put through to the prosecutor. I've given you the case number. So no, what I'll do, no, but, but what I'll do is person. I'll, I, I, yeah. seem, I, I seem to, I, I, yeah. no, let me finish, please. I, I seem to be, I, I seem to can't, it, it appears I can't get past the security guard at the front counter. I have a just right. Respectfully, uh, sir. Yeah, just respectfully, sir. Just to, basically, if you say that, if you send an email to the email address that I'm about to give to you, then you will get through to the channel that you're trying to get through to. So who's the, who's the prosecutor? Who's the prosecutor prosecuting the case? Can you give me the name yeah, of the prosecutor? Yeah, just according, just going by the CDPP policies, we can't give out start details. Oh, um, look, forget it, forget it. I'm gonna yeah, I'm going to I've taken I've taken I'll tell you what I've done, I've taken contentious notes. I'm going No, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that at all because I don't know who I'm speaking to. I ring, I can't find a prosecutor, I can't find a police officer. Mate, the whole thing's a shit show. So let's just leave it at that and not worry about it. Because I see I, I've never known something to be so difficult. You guys are coming making certain claims against myself, okay? And I seem to, having to have bash heads with the security guard who works for some private company, I can't get through to who I need to do. So look, forget it, mate. You're obviously a third party. I, I don't know. If you don't mind, yeah, I, if, you, if you don't mind, please, if you can uh, just send an email to the address. No, email? no, because I don't know who you are. And I don't, I'm not contracting with anyone and I'm conditionally ringing up because I've been made aware through the media that there was an arrest warrant issued against me, which turned out to be a furphy anyway. And I, I'm to believe there is some uh, attempt of service of documents. I'm quite happy. I'm not aware of that. Sir. Well, no, I'm and you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be because you're just a security guard. So I can't seem to get through to the named prosecutor who, who perhaps is representing the Australian Electoral Commission or some other entity. I don't know. I, I really don't know what this is all about. So look, what I'll do is I'll make a contentious note and I'll just uh, tell the court that I can't get through to the prosecutor. I'm about to give to you. No, mate, I don't want an email. email. I don't want the email address, okay? I'm not, I'm not taking anything off you, because I don't know who you are. You're just a security guard. So, look, don't worry about it. Have a nice day. Well, I'm sorry I couldn't help you. Well, I wasn't ringing no, you. For, I wasn't ringing you for help. Well, I was just trying to relay the information onto you that if you want to touch... Are you, the ca are you the case uh, manager? I'm not the case manager. I'm the security guard at reception. So you're a security guard at reception, yep. you're not the case manager, yet you're telling me what I have to do. I wasn't telling you what you have to do, I was just basically explaining the policies 
No, I'm not interested in policies. I'm interested in procedure. I'm interested in procedure and I want to know the entity that's got a biff against me. That's what I want to know. But if I can't find that, I'm just not going to um, put something in a generic email because it's your policy. Rodney, if you don't mind putting out your queries on an email, please. Just no, no, I'm under no. You tell me under the Act where it says I have to do that. Point to the Act where it says I have to do that. It's like I said. If you don't mind, would really appreciate that. However, well, you know I'm what I, you know what I'd really appreciate that I could get past the privatised security guard that seems to sit on the front desk and canvas and and um, is is the gatekeeper for the for, for every phone call, I suppose. I mean, do lawyers get to talk directly with the prosecutor? So your email is going to go straight through to the case officer, so, so that's why... OK, I who is the case so officer? Can, who is the case I officer? I can't give out details of staff members, um, unfortunately. However, what I can do is give you an email address to send your email to. It'll go straight to the case officer. So you know the case officer, do you? I can't give you out a detail. No, that, that's not the question I'm asking. The question, the question I'm asking: Do you know the case officer? But I can assure you that your email will go through to the uh, oh. the, the correct channels. Too hard, mate. You have a nice day. Thank you. You too. Bye. Bye. But there you go. A warrant was issued for my arrest. I have tried to. Um, I have tried to get service of the documents and as I understand it I just cannot get through I cannot find a police officer I can't find the Australian Federal Police and this is becoming very concerning uh, considering uh, this was uh, apps was actually investigated um, some time ago so by and let me take you to that I also want to put up a document that um, some time ago, the well, back in 2019, the uh, Australian Federal Police received the documents with my nomination that filed in London, and they didn't continue with the investigation. They said there was insufficient evidence to show that uh, any alleged offence had been committed. So that's uh, a document that I will be making available as well. So. Uh, at this stage, that's all I have to, to offer, but you heard it there. I have made every attempt to try and get through to a prosecutor. Every time I do ring, I get the security guard, and then some lawyer that does not act for me gets a phone call from someone in the Commonwealth Director of Public Prosecution Department saying, would they um, pass on a message to me? I do not have a lawyer on this case. I'm representing myself. And uh, the only time I did put a lawyer on was to, um, to cancel the warrant, which was made uh, unlawfully against myself. I have not received personal service of any documents. And like you see there, I have been making every attempt to go in there. I did receive a call the other day from the West Australian Police. I'm not sure uh, what the WA Police uh, why they're getting involved. This is a federal matter. This is Australian Federal Police, uh, not a state issue. So I'm not sure why the WA Police should be wasting the WA taxpayers' money to, uh, to basically try and make contact when I'm actually making direct contact within the correct jurisdiction. Uh, well, as they claim it to be. I say it's, in, it, it's different, but I'm certainly making every attempt to receive these documents because I do want this to proceed. I will be holding the Australian Electoral Commission to account. I will be making sure that if it goes to trial, it will be done with a jury as a matter of right under our constitution. And I will be making sure that uh, it goes under the correct jurisdiction of the laws of the Commonwealth. So this is why this is a very, very pivotal case in the Australian history. And um, But we're not off to well, I'm happy, I'm in the, the starting barriers, but I just can't seem to get the other horses to settle down. They're breaking the gate. Some won't go into the barrier, obviously. So um, we want to run this big constitutional race. Uh, everyone's round at the finishing line and and uh, we've got no starters at the moment, but I'm ready to run and I've, I've got a good jockey. So um, I'll keep you all informed, but uh, that is my weekly update. 
Well, uh, I return, uh, like I said, uh, g'day everyone. I just wanted to inform you of a official statement that was provided by me. Uh, I have taken all the necessary steps. I have, uh, it's, it doesn't say it's sensitive. It's an official statement and I believe it needs to be brought to the people's attention. Um, and it was made by a leading senior constable of police of Victoria. Now, um, I want to just quickly run through, I will make the document available for um, people's viewing. But what is interesting is this is, is good that a number of police are now starting to uh, know their position. Uh, they know that they are a constable and a constable does not have to, uh, under law, take instructions for, from a higher ranking sergeant. Look, it is redacted. Um, it was, uh, the statement was made and signed by the officer on, at 1.29 p.m. on the 15th of June 2022 at Backers Marsh. And uh, as you can see there, it was witnessed by a Richard Taylor, Senior Constable, 3464-115-117 Main Street, Backers Marsh. Okay, so uh, I have given it to a well, a, um, a police officer, tactical response fellow in uh, Victoria. He has perused the document and he tells me uh, it's in the right format. It definitely, on the face value, it, it, um, it is what it is, appears to be. And like I don't make any claims here, but I think it's important. Well, no, it's not a think. I know it's important um, that we bring this to the um, people's attention, especially in Victoria. I'll go down here. Um, okay, at point four, it goes to say, at point four, uh, if, I, if I just bring that up a bit, I have new information that the Victorian Police Fraud Squad investigation into the red shirts matter was interfered with, obstructed and prevented by senior police high up in police command from being conducted normally and properly. It may also have involved other people outside Victoria Police Command. Okay, so then he goes on at point five. There needs to be an investigation in how the Red Shirts investigation was conducted by Victoria Police Command. Okay, the actions of the, of the suspect Labor MPs in the Red Shirts wrought have never been properly investigated due to the interference and obstruction of the fraud and extortion squad investigators by senior police in police command. So if I just take you down here, I mean, it is very disturbing uh, considering uh, we have we have certain law officers um, not, you know, carrying out their due diligence. And I'll take you down here. This is interesting. I think it's at point eighty six. Um, Okay, now, if we go here, police have requested interviews with those 16 MPs, but they all decline. Well, there they are there. I'll bring them up and I'll just take you through them. So this is very disturbing and uh, I believe it should be brought to the people's uh, attention. Uh, I was, uh, so that you can elect what needs to be happen. I've taken my own view. My whole team has taken its own view. And uh, we believe action must be taken immediately. No one is above the law. And uh, we need to, um, yeah, make this available. And uh, the, the correct people need to support this. And, and obviously um, a further further independent investigation uh, needs to be done on the uh, on the the uh, the points raised in this official statement so that will be made available and uh, like I said I'm not here pointing the finger at anyone but this is the sort of stuff uh, that I have 
had a number of police officers reach out to me over how we're sort of dealing with my matters and uh, saying, look, you know, these are, uh, these are matters that uh, what's occurring in other parts of the, f the uh, police force and uh, we must have integrity in our police force because after all we pay them, or do we? So uh, yeah, I'll leave it to you, but there's, uh, I'll make this available on the Great Australian Party website. Uh, it won't go up until tomorrow, but uh, it certainly doesn't say it's, um, it's sensitive and it shouldn't be put out in the public. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll leave it to the Australian people to be the public jury. And uh, yeah, you decide what, uh, what action uh, is required to, to be taken because at, after all, we pay them to uphold the laws. We pay for a lawful um, judicature. We pay for a lawful legislator. We pay for a lawful um, parliament and government. And uh, what's happening in Australia, just uh, I shake my head and uh, we need to all come together and start uh, dealing with this because if the authorities won't deal with it well then the people have the power to deal with it so I'll leave it at that and uh, thank you very much and thank you everyone for continuing your support um, in certainly holding the hierarchy to account bye for now well, there is no threats against citizens. No, we've, got a, right. we've got an approval for this. That's right. So we're going to facilitate it. You play by the rules. You breach the rules. Okay. And poop. You're displaying offensive material. Such as? Such as flags that... <laughs> could, you, could you quote the legislation against... Uh, it's a summary offences, eh? It's offensive conduct. Which causes offence, people? Summary offences. Which particular flag would you think causes offence? I mean... Uh, you know. We, we know, all right? all right? That's it. All right. That's it. No, honestly, sir. That's it. That's it. That's it. I've been told. None? Just, just the, just the valve. <laughs> don't, don't test me on it. We want don't, to know don't which test me. Another friend. He's offended by the alphabet, mate. <laughs> He's offended by the alphabet. Hey, going, guys. Here we are at the massive march for neutrality. It's amazing that so many Aussies are out here today having their say, marching for neutrality, to keep us straight out of the war. Anthony Albanese needs to wake up and smell the coffee and have a look at what's going on here. I want to say a big thank you to all the great Australians here today. Look at the sentiment here. People are saying no to war. People are saying yes to neutrality. People are saying that they disagree with Albanese's decision to send our troops or our money or our equipment overseas. All the streets are blocked off. The police have blocked off half the city. We've got many people here having their say, saying no to war, saying no to Australian involvement. Whatever happens overseas, that's overseas business. Australians have been dragged into overseas wars, you know, ever since the British colonised this place. Enough's enough. We have to stand up and say no. Albanese, no more Australian funding overseas for wars. Spend the money at home, spend the money here. We do not want our diggers or our money going overseas to the Zelensky regime. Doesn't matter what side you want to go for, Russia or Ukraine. Let's put Australia first. Your name? Bruce Shillingsworth, Murawari Budgety Man. Ooh, that's beautiful. Neutrality now, yes. Yeah, look, it's a part of it. Look, this is a part of the peace peacemaking process. And what we want to do is stop all the wars, not just the one in Russia and Ukraine, but right across the world. And we're going to stop the Australian government from the money that they spent out there. We're going to stop that because look at it in our own backyard. We've got a lot of problems and issue here, especially with the original people of this continent. Why are we spending billions and billions of dollars on war instruments? and weapons in those countries. We need to stop that as a collective of people and a collective of all Australians. Because we are here, we've got to protect ourselves at the end of the day. But let's make these bastards accountable. Let's put the dark forces on notice and let's say enough's enough. Just a couple of questions, is that cool? Sure. Okay. Neutrality, the rally today, do you support it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, not, I'm not for the Ukraine uh, position or Russian. I just want peace. And I think, uh, particularly for Australia, we should be pulling back and not getting involved in other conflicts which aren't necessarily directed by governments and might be from some powers above the government. We call it the military industrial complex or the destruction business. Yeah, yeah, and we don't want to be fodder. Should we be sending billions more and more weapons of mass destruction or no? No weapons, no. no. Weapons. no money? 
No money. Neutrality now? Yeah, and a peace deal. Or just make, help them talk. Like while we're all looking at this, there's other things going on which mainstream doesn't want to even talk about. I oh, hear did it. No, but people like yourself, you want to get that independent view out there. And uh, the more we talk about it like this, that'll just spread to a tipping point when sooner or later people just will wake up and know what the real story is. Thank you very much. Uh, why I'm here, I'm most probably not like the rest of the crowd, but when calling for an independent Australia, uh, you get told by a US billionaire that owns all the media in Australia that you're a traitor to the Australian war cause, um, that it's a crime to call for an independent, neutral Australia. Well, I don't care who else is here. I'm going to be here. Remain neutral? Absolutely. It's not our conflict. No, it's not our conflict. We're sending money over there and our own citizens are right now suffering floods, homeless, children are not eating. There's certainly no need to send our, our men our men and women over there, which they're contemplating our uh, money. Our money. Yeah. And I fear if it carries on going down this way, we're all going to learn the hard way. And But he's a hero, isn't he, apparently? Yeah. As he's, <laughs> his $32 million home he's just purchased over in California. Yeah. Apparently he's worth $2 million. $2 million four years ago, now he's worth $170 million. Goodness. Oh, I've heard he's worth a lot, lot more than oh, that. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's probably just a declared yeah, money. Sure. <laughs> Neutrality equals peace. Peace equals prosperity. We have nothing to do with the Ukraine, nor are we allied to the Russians. I'm a combat veteran. Yep. I've fought in wars that weren't our business. Same that cost us. Same yeah. Same Iraq, same. Afghanistan, Cambodia. Yep. I was with the United Nations Transitional Assistance Command yep. in Cambodia. Yep. Do you think we should be sending more money and more material no, no. to the Ukraine? No, not involved. It shouldn't be involved in any way, way shape or form. Because what's, what Putin's doing, he's been pushed into a corner through NATO's actions. This has been going on for the last 20 years. Well, blackmail, do you reckon? Well, I wouldn't say blackmail. It's more like just an affront on his senses. Like, he, as I said, the, he put a line in the sand and said, look, you stay there, don't bring NATO, don't send your missiles, do not go past that line. They pushed over that line. So he whacked off, he said, OK, well, there's the line now. Please do not enter that. I don't want to get into an affray. They came in and crashed again. Right, NATO should have backed off a long time ago, back in 2014. You agree? Absolutely, I do. Yeah. Thank you very much for your time and your patience. Neutrality equals peace equals prosperity. I noticed you got the general on there. Absolutely. How do you feel about the neutrality rally? Neutrality, great. Absolutely great. Simeon is a true leader. He's a great leader. He's as, nearly as good as Ricardo. Really? Oh, we might have begged a different. Yeah. He's great. Absolutely. I'm handing out these brochures today. And what we need to do is to build the people's army. Peaceful. Definitely peaceful. But we peaceful. So we need to build more people because this is it's the people that are going to do all the work and build that, you know, pull down what's evil. Should we sell more money and more material to the Ukraine? I think everything we have just about gone there, thank you to Penny Wong. Uh, the neutrality, I think it's a wonderful thing. We need to seek the truth. Absolutely. Do you think we should continue to send billions of dollars in armament? Uh, absolutely not. We're going to get sucked dry by the US war machine. We've sent the them three... Suck every other country dry, they come near. We've sent billions already, plus armament fighting vehicles. Should we send them anything else? What, to uh, the Ukraine. Nazi junta in Ukraine? We should never have sent them. I thought it was a disgrace that Anthony Albanese, after going to kiss the ass of NATO, then went straight over to Zelensky while Julian Assange is sitting in jail in, in Belmarsh in UK for exposing the war crime of these, these people and they are the gangsters that run this planet. When you look at what the United States did the 20 years, over 20 years to Afghanistan for shareholders profits, for these pillaging, the only thing they talk about sustainable about this is I call it the destruction reconstruction. They destroy countries at US taxpayers expense then rebuild them as they want to under their own profit and if we don't overthrow these gangsters we will find ourselves on the road to disaster and catastrophe. We believe that neutrality equals peace which equals prosperity. What do you say sir? Uh, I, th I think so yes. Yes, yes, that is why we're here. Neutrality 
now? Yes. yes. Oh, most definitely. Should have been even in World War II and World War I, we shouldn't have done it. Billions and billions of dollars. Weapons of mass destruction. Do we send some more? No. We've got to clean up our own backyard. No. No. We're giving it up. Neutrality now, yeah? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Thank you very much, ladies. Hey, boys, how you doing? Great. So what do you think about the neutrality rally so far? Fantastic. Fantastic great. turnout. Great. great day. Backgrounds, all different backgrounds around Australia coming together. Should we be giving more money and armament to the Ukraine? We should take it all back. Take it all back? Take it all back. We need to remain neutral. We, we don't want a part of a satanic regime. No more money, no more weapons. Oh, man. You know, for, yeah, I, I, I'm glad I had the chance to speak. I am so angry about the fact that we have people drowning in the northern rivers and we're not getting help from the bastard government and that I learned to swear two words in these last two years bastards and bullshit and I'm so angry that instead of looking after our own money was being sent away to do harm actually not good to our people but harm to other people another five billion five hundred million dollars and more vehicles yes or no no we should not send anything over there let them handle it okay and we're going to handle our people look after our people here in australia neutrality now neutrality now and forever actually neutrality rally what do you think sir well i'm glad it's happening there's got to be a louder louder voice on all this excellent excellent war has solved nothing war has Lost filled the men. pockets up of the elites Correct. We believe neutrality equals peace, peace equals prosperity. Yes. Switzerland's never been in a war. They're the richest country in the world. Hello. Good on them. Good on, good on, good on them. On. Sir, veteran? Yeah. Join a club. Paulie. Yeah, Paulie. Recon Re troop, first armoured regiment, cavalry troop, not to four. Um, just canvassing your opinion about uh, the conflict in Ukraine. We believe that neutrality equals peace and peace equals prosperity. Are you familiar with the conflict in Ukraine, sir? I've, I've looked at a lot on Telegram. I know that uh, I, don't, I don't think it's uh, being done for the right reasons. Do you think we should be involved? I, I, and I don't think we've got a dog in the fight. <laughs> so what do you reckon? Should we be involved or not, sir? No, we've already done too much. You've done too much. I yeah. say to Anthony Albanese here today, Anthony Albanese, pull your troops out of the Ukraine, get them out while you can. You are leading them into war and you are going to have innocent blood on your hands. And me, Donald J. Trump, we don't support that for the Australian people. We put the Australian people first, we put our country first, and we put our citizens first. We do not put them last and simply drawing blood of the innocence of our beautiful people. We don't do that. So I'm here today to make sure that we do not go to war. So you don't want Albanese to send another $500 million or any more military weapons? 1,000% no. We don't support any more $500 million. We don't support another $284 million sending the troops there. We don't support any more... No, no, no more armoured fighting vehicles. We don't support any fights. We are here and I'm pro-Australian and I love this country. I love the Australian people, I love our workers, I love the indigenous communities, I love every single individual from different cultures of different religions in this country and I think we should stand together and I think we should say no to war and yes to peace. That is my message for you this, as the Australian President. This four page document is straight off the United States Marine Corps Gazette and when you read this it certainly doesn't paint the picture that you get in my mainstream media. I'd urge everybody to read this. This is the August edition. United States Marine Corps Gazette. Thank you. Can we have a copy of that? That's right. Thank you very much. Murder. Thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt do no murder. Do no robbery like politicians. You know, they're looting and plundering society. Um, uh, a biblical, like Jesus and Peter agreed that politicians should not exact tribute from their own countrymen, which is how they're financing the Ukraine war by exacting tribute from us all. And they, they bribe these domestic terrorists with a portion of those funds and uh, build, um, make Bushmaster machines and stuff to go and murder you know, no, more money, no more weapons of war. Not to the uh, politicians, you know. Well, Zelensky's a politician and he's calling for the 
Well, I'm, I'm referring, nuclear war. I'm referring to Australian politicians. Albanese. All of them. They're, they're all. Scummo, Scummo sent them billions of dollars and armoured fighting vehicles. Yeah, yeah. Well, if a Christian politician's got the same um, policies as a non-Christian politician, there's a problem.